A very good morning and welcome to the side chapel here in St. Peter's Church in Mount Rath. You're very welcome wherever you're tuning in from to this service of morning prayer for the second Sunday of Christmas. Our service begins on page 101 of the prayer book. The Lord be with you and also with you. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his Spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Our first canticle, the Venite, let us take together verses 1 to 7. O come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his and he made it, his hands moulded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The first reading. A reading from the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 24, beginning at the first verse. Wisdom praises herself and tells of her glory in the midst of her people. In the assembly of the Most High she opens her mouth, and in the presence of his host she tells of her glory. I came forth from the mouth of the Most High and covered the earth like a mist. I dwelt in the highest heavens, and my throne was in a pillar of cloud. Alone I compassed the vault of heaven and traversed the depths of the abyss over waves of the sea and over all the earth and over every people and nation I have held sway. Among all these I sought a resting place. In whose territory should I abide? Then the creator of all things gave me a command and my creator chose the place for my tent. He said, make your dwelling in Jacob and in Israel receive your inheritance. Before the ages, in the beginning, he created me, and for all the ages I shall not cease to be. In the holy tent I ministered before him, and so I was established in Zion. Thus, 
In the beloved city he gave me for a resting place, and in Jerusalem was my domain. I took root in an honoured people, in the portion of the Lord, his heritage. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 147, and that begins on page 762 of the prayer book. Let us recite together. Alleluia! How good it is to make music for our God! How joyful to honour him with praise! The Lord builds up Jerusalem and gathers together the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up all their wounds. He counts the number of the stars and calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His wisdom is beyond all telling. The Lord lifts up the poor, but casts down the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving, make music to our God upon the lyre, who covers the heavens with cloud and prepares rain for the earth, who makes grass to grow upon the mountains and green plants to serve our needs. He gives the beasts their food and the young ravens when they cry. He takes no pleasure in the power of a horse, no delight in human strength, but the Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their trust in his steadfast love. Sing praise to the Lord, O Jerusalem, praise your God, O Zion, for he has strengthened the bars of your gates and has blessed your children within you. He has established peace in your borders and satisfies you with the finest wheat. He sends forth his command to the earth, and his word runs very swiftly. He gives snow like wool and scatters the hoarfrost like ashes. He casts down his hailstone like morsels of bread. Who can endure his frost? He sends forth his word and it melts them. He blows with his wind and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob his statutes and judgments to Israel. He has not dealt so with any other nation. They do not know his laws. Alleluia. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The second reading. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians, chapter 1, beginning at the third verse. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second canticle, the Te Deum, let us recite together part one. 
We praise you, O God, we acclaim you as the Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, the cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you, the noble fellowship of prophets praise you, the white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all praise, the Holy Spirit, Advocate and Guide. Our third reading, the Gospel reading. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John, chapter 1, beginning at the first verse. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our third canticle this morning, the Canticle Benedictus, again let us recite together. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel who has come to his people and set them free. The Lord has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through the holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of those who hate us, to show mercy to our forebears and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hand of our enemies free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous before him all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be forever acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my Rock and my Redeemer. Amen. I hope despite the anxiety and the worry surrounding the coronavirus that you had a good and pleasant Christmas. Uh, we are once again in lockdown, which are, are unfortunately our worst fears 
were confirmed, but with the help of God, we will soon be able to exit uh, lockdown and more and more people uh, will be hopefully in receipt of the vaccines and uh, once again we'll be able to hopefully start out on the path to worship back in our churches to more normality in our lives and eventually to see the back of this awful coronavirus. As I say, the coronavirus was somewhat of a shadow over our Christmas uh, celebrations because we knew we would be entering lockdown on St. Stephen's Day, which uh, we did in fact do. Now, I'm sure, uh, like a lot of you out there, and my, myself included, over Christmas I did a lot of eating um, pudding and Christmas cake, biscuits, crisps, um, drinking lots of things I probably shouldn't have been drinking, such as uh, fizzy drinks, etc., etc. All of us trying, I suppose, to unwind a bit and relax over Christmas, tucking into the various things that uh, taste good and, and feel good, but ultimately perhaps are not so, so good for us indeed. And the reality, of course, is that we can take uh, things into ourselves through the mouth that aren't terribly good for us, things that uh, make us un unwell and things that if eaten uh, too much of are going to put on uh, weight in us and make us quite unhealthy. But the reality, of course, is that there are other things that can come into us through the eyes, through the ears, and into the heart and mind, uh, mind that themselves uh, don't make us uh, well either. And that is things that uh, upset us, disturb us, and things that maybe are deliberately uh, produced with a view to unsettle us in our faith. I take, for example, the recent broadcast on the national television station RTE that caused a great deal of upset on New Year's Eve to many Christians across our land. So there are things out there that can be set up and put out uh, to, uh, to destabilise our faith and that uh, through the eyes, through the ears, come into the heart and mind and can unsettle us, disturb us uh, and so on. And so there are other different things as well that, that can do that. And the reality for us is that we're told in our Gospel there this morning from St. John that Jesus was the light of the world, the darkness could not overcome it, and into the world he came. And that light we receive uh, through, of course, our eyes, our hearts, and in our mind as well. But the one way of uh, keeping that flow of goodness from the Lord coming into our heart, coming into our mind, coming into our lives, is to be open to him in prayer, to communicate with him through our prayers, to be open to that light of Christ which has come into the world and continues to exist in the world through him, the Son of God. And it's particularly important, especially at a time where we're not able to gather for public worship, because we have the support of one another when we're in here in church with our brother and sister Christians praying together uh, to the Lord and coming, to coming together to give honour and glory to our God and Saviour. So uh, in our own time, to make that time, particularly now during this period of lockdown where maybe other cares and occupations uh, will come our way, but to continue to be open to the light of Christ which has come into our world, to open our hearts and our minds, our eyes and our ears to the Lord through our personal prayer and our study of the scriptures. And that is my prayer as we begin a new year together, uh, journeying into this new year, which none of us know what it holds for us. But we do know that our path is being illumined for us by the light of lights, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And so let us be ever open to him this day and all days. Amen. The Apostles' Creed I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide and defend our rulers and grant our government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people and bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and let your glory be over all the earth. O God, may clean our hearts within us and renew us by your Holy Spirit. The Collect for the Second Sunday of Christmas. O Almighty God, in the birth of your Son you have poured on us the new light of your incarnate Word and shown us the fullness of your love. Help us to walk in this light and dwell in his love, that we may know the fullness of his glory, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first collect of morning prayer, the collect of peace, let us pray. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your protection, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the third collect. Go before us, Lord, in all our doings with your most gracious favour, and further us with your continual help, that in all our works, begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name, and finally, by your mercy, attain everlasting life, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The prayers of the people, let us pray. Lord, as we begin this new year 2021, grant us the time and energy, the foresight and the wisdom to review how we each live our life with our family, our friends, our community, our co-workers, and most importantly, with you, our God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we enter this new year, we pray for all the followers of Jesus Christ, we pray in a particular way for our persecuted brothers and sisters, for those Christians across our world who are not free to practice their beliefs as we are. Lord, we ask you to give them the hope and help that they so desperately need. Touch the hearts of world leaders and open their eyes to the injustices against so many people of faith across our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those affected by the COVID-19 epidemic throughout our world. We pray particularly for the recovery of the sick and the safety of our nurses, our doctors, our carers, social workers, and all who are working so unceasingly and so diligently to assist those in most danger. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have lost their jobs and who are experiencing worry and financial problems at this time. We pray for farmers, we pray for business owners, we pray for all of those facing financial difficulty as this new year begins. Lord, we pray that the response of our government and banks and other lending institutions will be one of kindness, compassion and generosity and that they will be able to weather the storm and soon enter into better financial times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all of those who have been bereaved over the period of 2020, and in particular, those who are bereaved over the Christmas period. 
that they may, fi may find consolation in the promises of Christ, that their loved ones who have enjoyed a rebirth as they enter their eternal life with you, our loving God and Father. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick at this time. We pray in a particular way for those who are at home and who are worried, lonely or anxious in this period of lockdown, especially those fearing for their health. We pray for those in our hospitals, nursing homes and convalescent homes. We pray for those preparing for surgery or who have recently undergone surgery. Lord, be with them at every step of this time to give your healing counsel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Before the final prayer and blessing, our services online will continue here on YouTube until such a time, please God, as we exit the lockdown. Our uh, online uh, assemblies for the school will also recommence when the school uh, reopens the week beginning the 11th of January. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. God bless you all and keep safe and well.